I saw this tweet too. And I was like, what? <laughs> Apparently there was like a certain scene that, you know, the creators of Nier wanted to put in, but whoever was distributing it said, no, this is not how that character should have acted. As if they're talking on behalf of the creator of the series itself. Nier Automata anime was censored and producer says he knows the character better than the creator Chibi. Give it to me. Never forget what Aniplex took from us. Okay. Never forget what Sony technically took from us. Because Aniplex, FYI, if you did not know, is owned by Sony. Got it. And the fact that we had a producer at Aniplex straight up tell Yoko Taro, aka the creator of Nier Automata, that basically he knows 9S better and that 9S wouldn't do something to literally 9S's creator is legitimately wild stuff. Like it is an insane thing to say. I think one of the most cringe things about criticism in terms of media is like people acting as if they know better than the creator themselves. I remember that one ReZero video. I forget who it was. Norality or something? I forget. But the girl was like, you know, they were so close to, you know, being actually good or, you know, this should have been like this instead. It's like, why are you speaking on behalf of the creator? You are consuming his art and his vision. You think he, you know their vision better? And here, and it's a very stupid, you know, pointless scene. I don't think, you know, this scene is necessary to, I guess, you know, if you take or give the scene, doesn't make the show or, you know, the, uh, the anime better. Ah, it depends. Sex definitely sells and fan service like that a lot of people probably would enjoy. If it's taken away, it's not the end of the day world for me, but it's just about the principle of censorship and like the precedence it sets and how future stuff, it may not be just some goofy, you know, NSFW scene that gets censored, but something more than that. Like it is actually just insane stuff. And this is a new story that's been making the rounds in the anime manga community for the last few days now. There was a post on social media that started with this. There is a post on Reddit that has obviously made the rounds <laughs> as well. Basically, the translated interview. There's a lot of people talking about this. And a lot of people are bringing up the point that uh, this is an iconic image from the game of Nier. Oh... I wonder what these four, you know, stars could mean. Automata. For instance, you know, seeing, you know, this scene that's very vague. I've never played the game, uh, but it's looking like 9S definitely does want to clap 2B cheeks. That could imply that uh, 9S either wants to, let's say, initiate the, uh, the pound town or potentially kill 2B. The pound town. The it was a very vague statement, but it was very obvious what was mm. being implied here, especially with the overall sexual tension that was between 9S and 2B throughout the entirety of the game. So, fast forwarding to basically, you know, a few days ago, we have Yoko Taro's interview kind of surfacing and people are finding out about it. From what I can find is, is apparently this is a pretty old interview, about maybe almost a year old at this point, but it's finally surfacing and making, you know, the uh, light of day. People are finally realizing about its existence and basically now everybody is talking about it. So if you somehow potentially have heard about this news a while back, well, the reason for that is because technically this is an old interview, but the general public is now finding out about Is this spelled wrong? Hold up. N-E-I-R? It, 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 no, no, it, it's N-I-E-R. Is it N-E-I-R? I'm, I'm confused. It, 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 do you guys know? N I E R is correct. What? What? I saw some other things that N E I. Yeah, they're wrong. It doesn't matter. Got it. Myself included. I had no idea that this even existed. But it can be both ways. Is this some like plot stuff? Is it a spelling mistake or is this like? Plot related that it can be perceived as both N E and N I. I I don't know. Anyways, let's get into the main point. One thing that blows my mind about this situation is that Yoko Taro, as I already said at the beginning of this video, he is the creator. He is literally the father of 
Nier. He, yeah, he they created made it. Tracking Guard. He created Nier. He created these characters. Obviously, he's had some help, but he is legitimately the main creator of this world. And the fact that you have a producer at Aniplex, okay? Power tripping. That was working on this show, straight up telling Yoko Taro, the creator, that 9S wouldn't do this is just. It's such a wild statement. And they should have, like, like they could have just said, listen. It's a risque thing to put in this anime, and under new leadership, I think it's in our best interest to not have that. That's a very corporate respectful way to deny that, right? But the fact that he's like, mm, actually, I know 9S better than you, the creator of 9S, and it's my head canon that he wouldn't do that. Th that, that part is so fucking cringe. I have read multiple translations of the interview. For instance, this Reddit translation that comes from, like, a, a Spanish interview. And then there is one that's directly from the Japanese. And it's basically stated both times that, yes, the creator basically said that, you know, 9S wouldn't do this. And I'm just like, were we not playing the same game? I mean, I already showed evidence here with this image alone. Like, were we Some people are saying this could be kill. Instead of the other word. I don't know. I, I don't know. But if the creator is saying, you know, otherwise, then I, I think it, it... This is actually so stupid. <laughs> They're talking about fucking video game characters. Whether or not they would have sexual intentions with another fucking fictional character. But it, it's about the topic of censorship, okay? It's about what that means for future content as these corpos, you know, take over and you have no option. Are we not playing the same game? I'm willing to bet you that producer legitimately did not really play it much because it's like, I don't know how someone after playing near Automata, it could be like, 9S wouldn't do that. He 100% would. Yeah, he would probably be very awkward and shy, but he 100% yeah? would have intimate mo definitely would i mean looking to be cheeks who wouldn't moments with to be there is no doubt in my mind with that whatsoever so the fact that a producer thought he knew better than yoko taro is one of the biggest disrespectful things i have heard in a while now i do want to make sure this is stated okay okay that this interview apparently does have yoko taro and the overall producer side by side basically you know um talking to the person that's interviewing them and it seems like yoko taro more or less is on friendly terms with the producer that shot down his ideas or technically friendly. rejected his okay. idea he's still on friendly terms he hasn't like cut him out or anything like that it seems like more or less he's moved on but it does seem that deep down with his jokes and jabs in the interview that yoko taro does more or less he did want that scene with tubi and 9s but obviously Obviously, it, it's, it's those jabs and jokes, like, you gotta remain, you know, retain amicable terms, professional relationships, right? You can't just fucking burn bridges over this, but if he's making jabs like this, it, I, I'm sure they're so frustrated, right? Imagine being the creator, imagine have created something, and you have this vision, and you want to share more about it. Yeah, is it silly that, you know, 9S wants to clap two beat cheeks? Maybe in the context of the story, it's actually going to deepen the plot, and it's actually really meaningful, but to have that shit discarded by someone that it's gonna pull rank on you and say, nope, I, as the producer, say no, because I know your character better than you do, Mr. Creator. That's the part that pisses me off. Obviously, he did not get it. I'll talk more about the reason why it potentially wasn't added in a second, but more or less, though, Yoko Taro is still on friendly terms with the producer, okay? So, I wouldn't necessarily say he's upset or anything like that. Maybe he was hurt a little bit, but it, it seems like more or less he's not going to let that stop him from interacting with the team and all that, the staff and stuff. So, I do want to make sure that is stayed before going any further. Okay. But anyways, let's talk about why it potentially was not in the anime, okay? If I had to take an educated guess, Censorship. I would assume the reason why we didn't have a scene like that added, that Yoko Taro wanted added, is because... um broadcasting regulations like, yeah let's be honest <clears throat> obviously anime can be a little bit flexible in comparison to stuff that, like say in the west gushing romantical girls but at the end of the day some things do need to be censored to a degree to be able to air on you know tv broadcasting like, like would they have shown intercourse no they you can't it would have been like implied like, like like kind of how they did like rudy and eris in season one right or like even Sylphie. There's ways to kind of like hint and, you know, imply that yes, they clap in cheeks without directly showing it like a Queen Bee film. That's just how it is. 
um, this isn't the early 2000s or 90s where you can get away with a lot more stuff. Like, for instance, you know, uh, Elvin Lied and all that. If you've ever watched that, you know what I'm talking about. It, I've it's, heard um, of it. There's a lot more restrictions, so to speak. So if I had to take an educated guess, I feel like the producer more or less tried to come up with a very quick on-the-spot excuse to be able to get around the potential hassle that it would be to censor a scene like 9 Acid 2B getting it on, so to speak. That's perfectly fine, but the excuse... How are you going to fucking pull this excuse out of everything? You could have just said broadcast regulation. It's like, bro, times are changing, Yokotaro. Listen, my job's on the line too, man. Listen, I too want to see 9S, you know, clapping cheeks. But listen, we can't right now, okay? He, please, please understand. But instead he said, nah, I know that character better than you. That, that's the part that's weird. That's my educated guess. I feel like more or less it was just corporate speak for trying to avoid the situation of a censorship nightmare because of whatever the time bracket that, you know, near Automata would air on, it would have to also be in a time bracket that would be able to allow something like that to even air in the first place. There's a lot of anime that's put on very late, etc. at night to be able to air for a little bit more risque content. So when you factor that in, most likely just the producer didn't want to deal with that hassle and that's why most likely it got rejected which is fair it is fair at the end of the day but to outright say that 9s when do it i think is just a straight up gonna be honest bullshit lie it is complete bullshit it, it, there is no way that 9s wouldn't maybe 2b would initiate would, there is ways would. to handle this and you know let's let's get into that how okay. could a scene like that actually be incorporated into near in the first place because i yeah, you see Mushoku Tensei do it. There's been other animes that's handed, you know, handled these scenes without explicitly showing it. I have seen a lot of people talk about this, and it's like, if that scene hypothetically was added into the near anime, obviously it wasn't, but if it was, okay, what would it actually serve as a purpose? What would it... Mm, like, like, does it deepen the story? Like, does that scene matter, and does it enrich the story, or is it random fan service? I don't know, because I haven't played this game. Do besides obviously being some form of, like, fan service scene. Like, what would it actually do to progress the story? Well, one thing in particular is, is that Nier does have a way with telling a very good story, even with fan service scenes and stuff within the game, okay? And Yokotaro... Yes, I've seen time after time, 2B booty cheeks. Anytime she's in, you know, frame, even the anime, right? They love flipping her around. They, they love, you know, <laughs> just shaking them cheeks. Who is a really gifted writer. 100%. Anyone that has played his games knows this. Yokotaro is very gifted. But the thing is, is if I had to take an educated guess on how it would have been incorporated, it would probably be somewhere along the lines of 9S hacking into old database files and stuff, finding out about, you know, him being killed multiple times by 2B and okay. other people Whoa. from the organization, like the, you know, the androids. Plot twist. And, um, most likely he would probably maybe see, besides him just getting murdered, Maybe an intimate moment would to be at one given point. Okay. I feel like something like that could fit nicely within the narrative because it's like it would explain the attachment that to be has. I love how we're talking, like taking this shit so seriously. The censorship should be taken seriously, but this part of the video of like doing mental gymnastics to justify and reason why clapping to be cheeks matter. This this part is funny to me. Even more so with 9S, if there was an intimate moment, but obviously she killed him afterwards. Stuff like that. I feel okay. like that could be a very tasteful. Is 9S being killed by to be cheeks just suffocating his head? It looks like there's many different timelines or different iterations, you know, simulations or something where characters just keep dying, dying, dying and keep coming back and they just keep going. Addition ...to really just showcase a little bit more leeway to this segment here within the game. Basically where he said like, you know... You wanna kill 2B or you wanna clap 2B? What is it? You know, did he want to kill 2B or did he want to straight up, you know, do the deed with her so to speak? <laughs> it's very vague, but it would have given a lot more clarity that maybe he wanted sure. to do both. Anyways, one thing that does need to be stated about the whole situation is that I think that, more or less, we were robbed. We were 100% robbed. Yeah, it could have been death by Snoo Snoo here, bro. 9S could have had another creative way to die from 2B. By 2B just suffocating with their cheeks. Robbed of a potentially amazing sequence that would have probably rejuvenated the anime and got it discussed a lot. Like, yeah. I think it would be a viral moment. I think that some sort of controversial fan service like that, you know, happening. It's not really controversial. It's just, 
it just sucks but like it sells and i think there'd be definitely more uh hype around it would it rejuvenate and completely rekindle this anime i don't know because again the scheduling of this anime just fucking killed it back in season one i don't know if people are still watching it but uh yeah probably get people talking about it meme about it i talked about near a while back of months ago but i talked about how like the near anime came back and nobody was talking about it and you know scheduling man it was sad because obviously it entered into an issue where there was a lot of like uh hiatuses indefinite hiatus yep. because of production issues and it was very sad because near you know could have been very successful but obviously thanks to just the hiccups and the delays and stuff it basically killed any form of momentum that the yep. anime theoretically could have had it's so sad because in this channel i think we have like what two three episode reactions of it and what i saw was pretty deep like, the level of writing, the themes that it was trying to tell me in the first couple episodes already told me that, like, okay, this is, like, a pretty big brain show. It's, it's a, I don't know exactly the story it's trying to tell me, but there's, a, there's, like, this sadness in it. And some sort of, like, I don't know, uh, question that we're imposing of, like, are we real or something? But it's just sad, because the hype just dies down. The scheduling gets fucked up, delays happen, and no one cares about it anymore. It's just, like, people just gotta move on then. Womp womp. And the fact that it took so long to get the second half out was also just, it was very awful for the series. And there was just so much coming out around the time that everybody's overall expectations for the near anime was pretty much rock bottom. So I do feel like if a scene like this was added, yeah, it could have been cheap, but it would have definitely brought and rejuvenated a lot more people to probably talk about the series. I'm just going to be completely blunt. Yeah. So I feel like they really did kind of screw themselves over in the grand scheme of things by not even incorporating something like that. Now, another thing I do want to highlight from this interview, which is pretty fascinating, honestly, is that Yokotaro mentions he didn't want the anime to be strictly just like the game, which I think okay. is definitely something that I agree with. And I talked... You want, like, more anime-only scenes to kind of expand upon the game? ...about this in my first impressions and stuff and all that, little uh, passing comments on the anime, that I feel like adapting, you know, the Nier Automata game into an anime one-to-one... -one, would not necessarily work. The reason why the Nier game was just so successful and considered as a classic masterpiece... To be booty cheeks. Well, here's the thing. As a person that's never played the game but knows of Nier and knows of 2B, it's all 2B. 2B, the booty cheeks, her legs, her blindfold, her entire aesthetic. I don't know shit about the show or the series. But that character alone got a lot of people talking about it. I saw some random clip of Tubi going up ladder with somebody cameraman right below. Stuff like that. It's stupid, I know. But gets people talking about it. Is because Nier knew it was like a game. It was kind of self- Oh, another thing about Nier series is uh, I love the soundtrack. The soundtrack of these games is phenomenally good. Aware a little bit of its, you know, game entity. And it was able to do things that really kind of broke the boundary and broke the fourth wall, so to speak, within Nier. But you can't do those same elements within an anime space. And so I feel like Yoko Taro more or less wanting to uh, change things up in, you know, the actual anime makes a lot of sense. Okay. I think that, you know, he definitely had the right idea in mind because it's just the same one-to-one -one adaptation just would not work. And yeah, having the anime tell a little bit more about the story of Nier beyond what the game told you, maybe this scene could have kind of enriched that process. Sure, I, I think that's fair. And I feel like it would have brought and rejuvenated the overall, you know, attention to the anime as well if it was slightly different. So, more or less... The biggest takeaway from this entire, like, uh, ordeal with the interview to the stuff we found out, or at least is becoming more public knowledge, is that, um, in every direction, the near anime was really kind of set up to fail. It really yeah. was. To the... Delays, the man. ...with the production issues, to the, the split core thanks to the production issues, to just, you know, Yoko Taro being basically rejected, you know, multiple ideas he had rejected... It did result in the anime feeling very lackluster and more or less a uh, shell of what it potentially could have been. It's pretty sad, honestly. Once again, I don't necessarily think this is entirely the A1 Studios' fault completely. And all of Aniplex, this comes down to some decisions of the producer. But I do want to mention the fact, though, at the end of the day, they this producer and all that is owned by Sony and Aniplex. Yeah, and you know, you have the, the new meta, the Doomer shit news recently, you know, Karaka being acquired by Sony. So, you know, imagine this kind of situation is happening more and more. So, uh, just...
take that away as you leave it, you know, especially with the recent information that's came out in the, the last few days. But anyways, I'll leave it at that. That's it. It's just a uh, day old, you know, just it, it's just the age old conversation of censorship doesn't need to happen. It's just fan service, just titties, bro. Well, it's, it's a little bit more than that. It's about the precedence that I can set. Sony, Aniplex, these producers, you know, all having this power to override. Even the author, the creator of the show, that's fucking crazy. But, Coomers will find a way. This scene will be created with numerous different variations from freelance workers all across the internet. I'm sure the fan art will be there, and you will watch it. Here's the link to the video. Please go give Chibi's channel a check. Here it is. It's already out? Oh, it already exists. I see. Well, there it is, guys. You already have years worth of content for this scene if you want to see it. Goodbye.